so let's see. This is a thing I filmed a while ago. I had some drinks, and I gave relationship advice that I am so qualified to give. Um, yeah, that's it's just it's twenty minutes of some drunk rambling. If you listen to it, good for you. If not, you know. I get it. Some some pretty good drinks. I've eaten the minimalist amount today. And had me a few. few. Oops, time to act surprised that the logo's out so I can put duct tape on it. There we go. I uh, went to work today. Did the whole not eating, replacing food with coffee thing. It makes beer way cooler. Fuck, dude. I haven't drank in like most of my time in the car. Besides today. Um. Okay, let's trace your steps. Yesterday? No. It was the day before Tuesday? Monday. Didn't drink Sunday. Also, no. Wait. No. I had drinks when I saw Hamilton the other day. Scratch that. Uh, the movie Belfast? Anyone seen it? It's really good. <coughs> um... That that movie's a fucking roller coaster, bro. Open up your eyes. Did you realize that something, something everlasting love? Just looking at my phone without a plan. I'm gonna try to find something to talk about. I just felt like being on camera, but I didn't have a plan, which isn't a good plan. Because that that just means I'm an attention whore. That means I just I want the spotlight, but I don't want to work for it. <coughs> Shit. If there was like a a sexual version of the X Games, you'd call it like. The XXX games. Whatever. And I said to myself. Oh, what a wonderful world. Fuck yeah, dude. That was sick. Dude, Max, tell me you got that. I'm by myself right now. I wasn't earlier, if that makes it better. Buddy. Oops. Sponsor me. If you want. 
Let's look at the news. <laughs> but we'll look at the the max filter on news as in the the Google news that is news that Google has deemed worthy of my liking. For example, Lynn Manuel Miranda recalls what putting Disney what putting Hamilton on Disney Plus did for the Broadway show. <gasps> Bo Burnham and Kid Cudi vinyl releases spur big gains on top album sales charts. Merry Sexy Christmas, Ted Lasso fans. Um, Daniel Radcliffe once wrote a love letter to Helena Bonham Carter. Wish I had been born 10 years. And then the letter E followed by three periods. <laughs> Couple stranded in Boise Airport after their flight got canceled. Um, th- they uh, they realized how bad it would be being stuck in Boise when they they realized that it had uh, snowed four inches and the only r- reference that they knew to people from Idaho is, is potatoes. Oh, man, the weekend update would be so hard to do. <laughs> Spider-Man No May Way Home just made MCU Disney Plus history. Disney Plus has been out for, like, fucking less than five years. Fucking anything it does is history. There's a video of you film me just puking on a camera and put it on Disney Plus and be like, I just made Disney Plus history. I'm the only one puking on a camera. And it's like, because Disney Plus let me. Six signs of a deteriorating relationship. People know the true feelings in subtle ways. Is it a list or do I just have to read a bunch of sh- Here we guess. Numbers. Reason number one, your relationship may be ending. Coming from a person who's barely been in a relationship, here's my advice. Of... Here, no, more, here's my response to somebody else's advice. Number one, emotional detachment. Oh, that makes sense. How emotionally close does your partner feel to you? Would I know? How close do you feel to your romantic partner? Yeah, how close do you feel? Uh, John... Prospective studies show that lower feelings of love and less closeness at one time predict a greater likelihood of breaking up. That makes sense. (laughs) Studies have shown that as you grow to not like somebody, you tend to break up with them. Watch when people start emotionally detaching. It may be a sign that they are preparing to enter a relationship. No shit. Someone go to fucking school to make this it's on psychology today. I should be a psychologist. I'd spell it right with only an S. Number two, negative spontaneous reaction. Meaning, uh, I'm not going to. So there's, there's the thing in bold, and then there's the rest. Of, I'm not going to read that yet. I'm going to guess that, uh, you know, maybe uh, y- you're with your partner, and you just all the time are thinking about how much they fucking suck. <laughs> fucking taint. And they, uh, you, you, so that naturally anything they do is even if they do something cool they're like hey i made our bed you're like you know i like the pillow fucking crooked over you know 
you're mad that they did it like or maybe maybe you're like oh you made the bed but you didn't fucking clean the windows and it's like dude homegirl did something nice for you why can't you why can't you recip this beer and reciprocate oh so like meaning that that means you're you're just you just don't like them basically you've grown to not like them and then they do anything and you don't like it that's what i think this paragraph is gonna just say in a really long not as fun as i did way we hold conscious ideas about our partner parenthesis favorable or unfavorable and parenthesis but we also hold implicit ideas about our partners. These deeply held views about a partner and a relationship may be especially revealing about a relationship's function future. When there's no time for them to think through a response, what does your partner think of your competence? How fun are you to be around? How do you, how you compare to others? What's your gut impression of your partner? <gasps> I'm not reading these like questions very well. While these gut level impressions may be hard to see, they might appear in certain circumstances to be quite revealing. Indeed, longitudinal longitudinal work suggests that negative implicit partner impressions (parentheses perhaps especially those who hold low positive high negative impressions and parentheses) Maybe more at risk for a breakup. Again, no shit, doctor. Number three. Less supportive reactions to the good news. I fucking said that when I was explaining the second one. Is this one basically going to say what I just said in that first long-ass paragraph? But, like, a little bit different to make it seem like you can make it a third thing, so maybe this whole list could be the five reasons your relationship is shitty or maybe not i don't know let's see less supportive reactions to good news nope i am fucking reassuring myself that this is probably the same thing <sighs> am i gonna read it yes when something exciting happens if you share the news with your partner do they celebrate how do you react when your partner shares their good news one eyebrow how do you react when your partner shares their good news good news reactions may give some insight to the future stability of a relationship partners who perceive less constructive reactions to their good news disclosures are more likely to break up within the next few months compared to those who genuinely and energetically celebrate <laughs> There we go. Sharing good news to someone who doesn't react as you hoped is a depressing experience. Imagine how a less satisfying... Let me deliver this line right. Imagine how less satisfying reaction to your good news might shape your future behavior. <laughs> the next time you have good news... Feel me. <laughs> Would you even want to share it? <laughs> This could create further distance, further jeopardizing the relationship. Hmm, <laughs> crickets. Number four. <clears throat> but first, the sip I've been taking after every question will soon be followed by a sip I'll take during it. More than answer. Did it again. Number four. Fewer positive nonverbal behaviors. You know when you have like a fucking paper in school and it's got to be a thousand words and you type 950 words and so you just kind of say the same thing Four different times. It, the words are different, but the gist is the same. <sighs> Two, three, and four could have been the same. 
They're all just saying you're not fucking enthused with anything. Fewer positive nonverbal behaviors. Less supportive reactions to good news. Negative spontaneous reactions. And emotional attachment is number one. Two, three, and four are the same. <coughs> ah, fuck. I'm so smart. If you ever thought that how you say something can reveal more than what you say, you've tapped into some keen relationship insights. Period. An analysis of the predictive power of the nonverbal and verbal behaviors showed that positive nonverbal behaviors predict higher relationship satisfaction later on. Right. To what extent does your partner provide nonverbal support to you? Do you the same? If not, could it be a sign of a weakening relationship? Do you do the same? Do, do you like who you're with? You don't? Then break up with them. Psychologytoday.com. Number five. Oh, three. But five. Lack of self disclosure. So that means you're not like a fucking, you know, open about yourself. If you've got feelings and you don't want to tell this motherfucker anything because they're going to, you know, like either, you know, maybe you're like, I'm mad because fucking I did this and then the your your dick bag partners like you you did that with to you got mad at me for that the uh, other day and they hypocritize you and then you're like fuck i i don't want to tell them anything for the rest of time is mm -hmm. yep let's let's look how often do you share your feel? <laughs> Thanks. I am a genius. How often do you share your feelings with your partner? Called it. Do they share their feelings with you? The exchange of intimate feelings. A process called emotional self-disclosure can support relationship health. One person speaks... <gasps> And the other listens intently, comma, offers validation and shows they are. are. Oh, they care. <laughs> the represent, rep, rest, you know, I don't even want to read the rep. The res responsiveness of the listener is critical to self- Shut the fuck up. I don't even want to listen to this shit. <laughs> Did it? Number six. Nailed it. Check this out. Ready? Uh, ah. Fuck off. <laughs> Just kidding. How long have I been talking? 28 minutes? Let's 
So you just listened. If you listened to all of this, if you watched it, you probably watched about 10 minutes of it. Probably trimmed it. But if you listen to this, you listen to like 30 minutes of of a drunk kid just in his, he was sitting on the couch and he went I want to I'm going to sit <laughs> here now and talk into a mic I have no plan that's what you listen to and that's fucking awesome I think cuz that's art you not me just if you think that's cool like cuz I think it's cool. I think, like, hearing just how brains work, fucking, that's tight, man. <sighs> Fuck. So, yeah, I'm going to probably eat something. Why is there duct tape on this? Because I put it there. I'm not like black. I'm like, I'm like six drinks drunk. <sighs> All right. Uh.